achieving that, that's what we're talking about. All exercise is great and is good, but when we're talking about fat loss, there is specific exercise that gets the job done. All right, so if your goal is to lose fat, okay, which most of our members come here to do, if your goal is to lose fat, what we recommend is you get a minimum of two total body strength workouts a week. That's what you just did in the class, okay? Our members come and they have a customized fat loss strength program written for them, but we also teach it in the classes so people can come and get those workouts done with a group of people where it's a lot more fun. So two total body strength workouts a week, that is geared towards fat loss because not all strength workouts are equal. And the second part for losing body fat is that you need to have two to three metabolic workouts a week. Okay, so now we're up to four to five workouts a week for losing body fat. Okay, that's what we see as the average kind of minimum to make that happen. So if you like to hike, climb, bike, swim, all those kinds of fun things outside, that is after you get that bare minimum. Because those things don't work as effectively towards fat loss. They still burn calories, absolutely, and that's going to help in your overall caloric picture of how much you take in and how much you expend. So it's not that those things shouldn't be done, but they shouldn't be relied on as the only thing to get the job done. Does that make sense? All right, and if you want to maintain, so if you've reached the place of where you want to be, your weight, a lot of people ask, well, what, what does it take for me to maintain this? Because you can't go back to what you were doing before. You have to do something different to keep what you've achieved. So usually people can do that with one to two strength workouts a week and one to two metabolic workouts a week. So now we're at two to four days a week of that bare minimum base and then all the extra fun stuff that you want to do outside. And the reason why I'm going into this detail about it today and especially for those of you that are members is that we are in summer. And it's very, very common that people get caught up in like they're outside all week and they're not getting their strength workouts in. And they're particularly not getting metabolic workouts in, they're out on a bike ride for like two or three hours. But nothing was metabolic about that workout. It has a very different implication for fat loss and maintaining your lean muscle mass. So, any questions about summer, kind of how you make your goals still happen if your goal is fat loss or maintenance? Yes? Okay. So, um, a little tip on the exercise topic. That is, as I was telling you today in class, lift heavy. We're trying to build lean muscle mass. Okay, that really helps with metabolism and fat loss. And that's a whole conversation about how it does that. But lift heavy. Pick up heavy weights. Challenge yourself. And be consistent. Don't skip your workouts. I gave you guys those bare minimums. Don't skip those. And if you are short on time, short on energy, do five minutes of your workout. Do something. It is far more effective and you get far more benefits from doing a small amount than nothing. And there's a great article about that on the wall. It's called What Happens When You Skip a Workout. It was in the camera last week and it's actually um, a friend of mine who lives in DC who owns a facility just like us here. Um, so read that. Okay, any questions on exercise? You can ask questions at the end as well if, you know, if that's more comfortable. So food, let's talk about nutrition. So again, our goal was increasing lean mass, right? And decreasing fat mass. That's our change in composition that we're looking for when it comes to weight loss or fat loss. That's the goal. So with that goal in mind, what are the nutritional steps that you can take to achieve that goal? Here is the biggest thing that comes up when people come here. And they say to us, well, Sarah or Ann, they were really healthy. And I, I, don't, I don't understand why I like about this weight. So eating healthy by itself, as a descriptor, does not equal eating for fat loss. Can we say that again? Eating healthy doesn't equal eating for weight loss or fat loss. You can do both. And our cookbook, and some of you have our cookbook, Forming Nutrition, it does a fabulous job of teaching you how to eat healthy. There's lots of whole grains and beans and vegetables and fruits and lean proteins. It figures it all out for you, but it teaches you how to do it, and that's what we do here so that you can actually lose weight and lose fat and reach your goals. So you can eat healthy and lose weight, but just eating healthy doesn't guarantee weight loss. Things you need to do, you need to increase your protein. You have to have protein in your diet, lean protein, all throughout the day, vegetarian sources, dairy sources, meat sources, fish sources, all those things. You need it all throughout the day, floating around in your bloodstream because amino acids help repair and rebuild your muscle after your workouts. You won't build lean mass if you don't have that in your diet. We talked here about burning your starches. Starches are things all, I'm going to talk about healthy and processed starches all in one. Cereals, bagels.
quinoa, all those things are starches. Your body tolerates that the best post-workout. And if you're, that's what your goal is for fat loss, okay? Um, many people can tolerate starches at breakfast, some people can't. You know, it just depends where you are and where you are with your goals. Who knows who uh, Tony Robbins is? Who is he? What does he do? He's a speaker, a motivational speaker, has tapes, DVDs, all that kind of stuff. He was the first person that taught me about change of state, the topic of change of state. And that is that many of us work long hours. We have families. We have stressful jobs, stressful lives, stressful situations. Um, imagine you just had that kind of day, and you go home. And how do you feel? What are the things of how you feel? Give me some words to describe how you feel in your body. Exhausted. Hungry. Hungry. What else? Stressed, tired, emotional, angry, upset, all of those things, right? So what you describe as this teaching is that we don't like feeling that way, right? We want to feel a different way. How do we want to feel? What are the words that you describe how you want to feel at the end of that day? Relax. Relax. Satiated. Vital. Fulfilled. What's the other one? Energized. Energized, right? So you feel crappy and you want to feel better, right? We have this picture. Okay, you all have days like this, yes? Yes? Okay. So we usually reach for things like food, sugar, wine, drugs. Addictions, all those kinds of things. However, so those things do the job, right? They get us the feeling where we want to feel. However, they have negative consequences. And particularly when it comes to weight loss, we're usually taking in some form of calories, whether it's wine or sugar or whatever it is. So that's the negative consequence. You could step back to that moment where you're feeling angry and frustrated and tired and exhausted, and you think about what could help me feel the way I want to feel, but with a positive consequence. So things like just taking a walk, because you probably don't have a lot of energy. You don't want to go do a workout, but just go walk around the block. You know, get outside, get some fresh air, take a shower. This is my favorite. When I come home and I'm stressed and I'm hungry, I think I'm hungry, my brain thinks I'm hungry, but I'm really not, I'm just stressed, I go and take a shower. And for women who don't want to do your hair, like, put your hair up. Don't even wash your hair. Just get your body wet, get the hot, body, the hot water on your body. You get up, and I swear, nine times out of ten, I'm not hungry. It does work. Change <laughs> your state. Meditate. Do yoga. Do some breathing. Make a cup of herbal tea. Call a friend. Do something to get you to feeling better. So this is my tip around food because it's a big stumbling block for a lot of people in reaching their goals. Do something with that positive consequence that's going to affect how you feel. If you just want to get over there. You just want to feel better, right? All right. So as I wrap up here, the things that I want you to think about are number one, you need to be educated. When it comes to feeling confident in your body and changing your body composition and feeling sexy in your sleepless clothes and summer, you need to know what to do to get there. You need to be educated. And you need to be held accountable. You need someone there checking in with you either each week or a friend or a buddy that's going to keep you on track. It's very easy to fall off. And it's very hard to do it on your own. That's what we do here. Educate and keep you accountable. Do you want a little something extra?
great for endurance people, people that are out there for hours and they need that energy, but if your goal is fat loss, it is going in the opposite direction. So something to consider when you're thinking about your workouts, thinking like, oh yeah, I can just have this because I'm going to go work out. I'll have this piece of pizza and then I'm just going to go work it off. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. We think that in our mind. So where to begin? Things that can make a big difference in reaching your goals when it comes to fat loss and feeling confident in your body are the small things. Little things day by day that you do make a huge change in your body in time. And that's what we teach her and that's what we recommend. Don't go for making big, huge changes and totally rad you know, radical changes to your diet. Look, here I go. Those things don't work. Small little changes, daily resolutions, things that can make a difference. And that's going to segue right into what Anne's going to talk about for just a few minutes about goal setting and tips that she's going to